Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Okay. I'm Umesh, and this is my colleague, Tejas. Okay. And we are from search team of Flipkart, India. And today, we are going to present our work and the framework that we have built okay, for near real-time search in Flipkart. This is a custom framework, which is designed to hook right into the internals of Solar and Lucene. And this makes data available for ranking and faceting okay, without need of commit or reopening of searcher. So today we are going to take you through the uh, internals of it okay, from the basic first principles. So, yeah. So, uh, what is Flipkart? So okay, the agenda for today, okay, we are going to briefly talk about uh, the search at Flipkart, the need for real-time index, solar cloud as a solution. We did evaluate it, okay, and we found some issues with it. Then we will talk through our approach for it, and in the end, we will have some uh, time for question and answers. Okay. So this is Flipkart. We are the largest uh, e-commerce platform in India. And we practically uh, taught Indians how to shop online. Okay. So it, is this, it was a new market. And we built uh, India-specific solutions so that people can build a trust. So some of those measures were like uh, cash on delivery, our own logistics infrastructure to deliver the best quality of service, and our custom payment gateway. Okay. So this was uh, to name a few of them. Okay. And we have been there for eight years now, and you can see this, uh, this is uh, the just concluded sale that we had, okay, like five, five days back, yeah. October 9th, right? no, October 6th, okay, October 1st. So this is a yearly event okay, that we have, okay, and uh, this is where we push the limits of our system. We, we basically target a scale of uh, 10 to 30x. And we push the limits both on the supply side as well as on the search and discovery side. So this is some of the traffic that we get. So this time we had 800 active use K active users, which were uh, the requests were like 160K per second. Okay, this was the peak. Of which 25% was in search and browse. That was on the service side. Okay. On the solar side, 5,000 requests per second. But this was a, uh, uh, but we had tested our systems for actually 140K requests okay, on the service side with a very low median latency okay, of 11 MS and one part per minute. So I'm giving these figures okay, because we work at a very much of a scale. And uh, <coughs> on the catalog side, we have uh, about 243. 231 million documents, which are spread across uh, 50 categories, 5,000 subcategories. And since this is an e-commerce uh, website, so we have procs and we have, a, uh, we have lots of sellers for them. So like 100K sellers, okay, which uh, for 90 million SK, uh, SKUs, okay, we have 160 million listings. Okay, I will come to the, uh, the meaning of SKUs and listings okay, for people who are not familiar with e-commerce terminology. In a minute. One more thing, okay, this is because of marketplace, and this is because uh, a lot of these sellers, okay, are actually local sellers, okay, who ship and sell their products only to selected regions in India, okay, because uh, of the, it, it is, a, and we prefer, even if they sell uh, nationally, uh, we prefer, usually the delivery experience is not so good. The local sellers gives you a much better customer experience, okay. So regional availability and logistic constraints, okay, that plays a lot of role, okay, right in the, into the discovery of products. Okay, the typical search, uh, e-commerce search, we have heavy uses of filters, heavy uses of uh, faceting, and the top results matter, okay. You actually see only six products, okay, in a visible screen. If it is mobile, it is three. And uh, this is something which is specific to 
uh, lifestyle usually, okay, product, products are uh, collapsed by results. So, and even in case of uh, electronics, okay, so if you have multiple sellers, you do not want to see all the, seller, uh, all the products from all the sellers in, in your search result. Okay? You will collapse them and so only one seller. Okay? So that's called uh, result grouping or collapsing. And okay, as I said earlier, serviceability and delivery experience matters a lot. This is the main differentiating factor okay, in an e-commerce company. Okay? So we take it, take it very seriously and we have built it and baked it right in our search and ranking algorithms. So, and this plays a lot of role, okay, in the system, uh, this, in the way we have designed our real-time real system. Okay. So, I'm going to start with a use case. Okay. Why do we need, we need uh, real-time search? So, this is one browse page from Flipkart. Okay. And you can see, this is a screenshot. Okay. So, you can see there are six products. Okay. And the very first product is actually out of stock. Okay. So we wasted one premium space. Okay. And it's not a good user experience. Okay. This cannot be bought. This also can be possible because this product may be actually in stock and serviceable in some PIN codes. Some zip, so PIN codes are equivalent of zip codes in India. But over here, okay, at this particular zip code, okay, this is out of stock. Okay. It would be better okay, if we had actually removed this guy. Okay. It can get worse. Okay. So like in the, this is a screenshot from the big billion days, okay, two years back. Okay. We had, it was a single day event, and we had a lot of offers. And you can see all six, pro, uh, eight products that you are seeing over here okay, are out of stock. Actually, there, are, there were products okay, which were in stock, okay, but they were just below. Okay. We should have pushed this down, but that time our system didn't support it. Okay. So this is big billion day, 2014. Okay. And uh, this, is a, this was a steel deals. Okay. So you have a mobile, so you have a pen drive for one cent. Okay. And you have uh, cameras and mobiles for 90% discount. And, it seemed, and we had a whole bunch of them. Okay. Only thing is that the top guys ran out. Okay. The, it was just like a hard problem. Okay. People just bought it, okay, and within seconds it was over. And that created a lot of, lot of uh, issues okay, and it got us thinking, okay, how can we avoid okay, problems like this? So basically there are three problems. Okay. One is your, in your normal search and browse experience. Another is okay, when you have a, things like flash sales or steel deals, okay, they come like, they're part of flash sales. And uh, the third one, okay, where you have a ranking issue, basically. So before we go into the issues of it, okay, I will uh, take a minute okay, to describe how does our document structure look like. Okay? What does, how does the e-commerce product look like? Okay? So this is a product base. Okay? So you can see Apple iPhone. And uh, you have, it has certain attributes. It is available on some 32 sellers at this zip code. Okay, so one minute. So this is the sellers, okay. So you have basically multiple sellers for this, okay. This is one variation, okay. SKUs, so you can see it is, this iPhone is available in multiple colors and multiple stories. So you have, uh, I think this is gold, silver, and that's 16 GB, uh, 64 GB, and one tier. For this particular one 16 GB variation, which is basically SKU for us, you have uh, 32 sellers, which are giving different kind of offerings. So you have different replacement policy, 10 day, 30 day, then you have different uh, delivery, deliveries, okay, so SLAs, different prices, okay, and offers, okay. Uh, this is a screenshot which was available, offer was available only one app, okay, so you can't see it. Now about the data part, okay. all the static data or the text data, which is used for free text search, comes from catalog service. Okay. It's mostly static. Okay. But all the other data, okay, which is listing specific, okay, they come from their different services. Okay. So we have availability service, 
which gives uh, whether it is available or not at a particular zone, a particular pin code. Your seller rating service, offer service, pricing service. Okay. So notice I have color coded this to uh, the yellow ones. They don't change so much. Okay, they are not zone specific. The availability and promise engine, okay, they depend on what the destin user's destination is. So they change very much. When we map it to a Lucene index, okay, you have basically a parent-child document. The product or SKU is a parent document, and all listings are child documents. Okay. The query or free text search, that is mostly on SKU attributes. The filters are a combination of SKU and listing attributes. Ranking, that depends on SKU attributes as well as on listing attributes. So uh, what we do is, okay, because of performance reasons and because of okay, your uh, query and filters can encompass between these two, okay, uh, we actually have an index join join structure. Okay? So if people I hope people are familiar with block join structures. Uh, what it really does is, okay, uh, you give it a block, you can give to Lucene that, hey, I want this block of documents to be uh, put together, okay? So it will assign document numbers in that order, okay? And you can uh, block join index, okay, makes have use of that to give a very efficient and performant query performance. Okay. So, filter combinations or uh, uh, queries or shorting, okay, that is very, very efficient. So with that, okay, let's go back and look at what is happening over here, okay. So the first product is out of stock. It is not because okay, we have a, we actually take a, a availability as a strong factor in our scoring, okay. We also take, a, uh, it's in sorting parameter, so we push down any product which is not available, okay, explicitly. The reason it is out of stock is because the, the index data is stale, okay, this. And that wouldn't be an issue, okay, if we had to just uh, worry about these six products, okay, but this query matched 234K results, okay, which means, okay, if I want to have real-time availability of these fields, okay, I have to, it has to be available for 234K products. This is the second issue, okay. So, if you look at over here, okay, the different, like, okay, I talked, okay, the text attribute, that changes less frequently. In normal times, it is like 10 a second. During the BBD time, it can be like 100 a second, okay? And if you map it to updates per hour, okay, it is 100K, while pricing is 10 million, okay? No, actually, availability is 10K, actually, this is, so, okay, since it is in order, okay, that's why it is 10 million. Uh, availability changes a lot, lot faster than pricing, okay? And if you just graph it together, okay, uh, that gives a generic feeling, okay, we, so availability changes like 100x faster, okay, or maybe 1000x faster, okay, than text field, okay. So, and we have to, if we want to really be in sync, okay, we have to consume updates at this fast rate, okay. So you can say, why not just uh, build a streaming system, okay, and integrate with all these streams, and uh, consume it and put it in your solar index, okay. Turns out it is not so simple. Because what happens is uh, you have like say, lots of policy. I'm showing only three state updated streams here, okay, but we have a lot more. And if you try to put a central merge point over there, that becomes the bottleneck. Okay. We have tried that in past, okay, and this doesn't work. Okay. Second issue is okay, Lucene doesn't support partial updates. Updates in Lucene is actually a delete and then an add, okay? So even if one of your fields changes, you have to update and delete the whole document and update, add it again, okay? 
So, which means, okay, all these high update things, okay, that we saw, okay, over here, they are going to collapse into, they are going to basically exponentially, uh, they, they are going to up, uh, increase the update rate exponentially, okay, and okay, you are going to just not scale. So, the solar cloud. In solar cloud, okay, what you have is, okay, you have a injection pipeline, you have a bunch of batch of documents, and then you send the document to a shard leader, which then sends this document, okay, to each of these replicas. So, th there is a second issue, even if you could, okay, so let's say you could somehow, okay, send this, all these update doc updated documents to all the replicas, okay. Still, it will not solve for the problem because for this data to become available for indexing and searching, you have to reopen the searcher. You cannot consume this data directly. Okay, so and okay, this becomes we have a marketplace index. Okay, uh, we have a block join index. Okay, which means okay. Any listing changes, any field changes, we have to update the whole block, okay. which is very, very inefficient. One more thing is the soft commits, okay, because of the way it is implemented, okay, you have to, basically, anytime you do a soft commit, okay, it creates an in-memory segment. When you have an in-memory segment, you have a lot of merges, okay. segments merge, and that creates a lot of pressure, okay, on your uh, disk. Okay, and for us, okay, with this high, very high update rate, okay, this becomes really, really tricky. Also, it flushes all the caches, and we are heavily dependent on our filter caches. So, any missed in filter cache hurts the performance very much. Okay, so we have to because of this, we had to build our own custom solution. So Tejas will now take over, and he will build it. Uh, look at the inverted index from first principles. And we, he will explain uh, what our custom solution is. Check. Check. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into our approach towards solving for near real time. So the problem statement is quite simple. You have specific set of fields which do not change at all, which are quite static, the catalog attributes, and a bunch of fields which change very rapidly. Like during sale days, they just spike up. So how do we solve for this? Uh, before solving it, let's just go over Lucene segments and Lucene index a little bit so that you get some context for people who don't uh, already know this. So you have three different products, product A, product B, product C, whose uh, the first product has brand Apple, so availability is true, and price is 45,000. Sorry, that's Indian numbers, so 45,000 rupees. All right. So. <clears throat> When Lucene creates an in index out of this, basically each of these documents are assigned a document ID. And like for a particular term, you, you go and create an inverted index on top of it, which is basically saying brand Apple is available in product A and product C. So those are called terms and those are called, I mean, these are these parse bit sets, which is actually the posting list. So this is majorly used for matching, matching purposes, wherein I am firing a query like brand, apple, and availability true. I want all of these results. So this is used for matching. And this is a forward index structure, wherein for a particular document, I can ask for what the price value is. This is majorly used in sort, facetting, and use cases where you have to look up for a particular document what the value for that field is. Uh, are you with me? Or you guys already know this? All right. Let's go over a typical search flow. You have your Lucene segment, which contains posting list and doc values. You get a query, something of the form Samsung mobiles. And I want to filter down by exchange offer, and I want the price to be sorted in the descending order. Sorted by descending, yeah. Uh, it goes through a query rewrite layer first, which basically converts it into a more structured query, say something like categories, mobiles, brand is Samsung, and offer is exchange offer. Then it goes through the matching layer 
or the matching phase, which actually retrieves the posting list from the Lucene segments. Uh, and so here, basically, you go and retrieve the posting list for mobiles, uh, brand Samsung, and exchange offer. And you are going to do your intersection operation or whatever set operation you are specifying in your query. Once the matching phase is done, you basically have all your results set, matching set, which then is used by a bunch of these uh, components, uh, which majorly do lookups into the doc value store. Like, say, uh, our original example had sort by price. So you would, for each of the matching documents, you would go look up the value in doc values, and you would keep it in your heap, uh, and uh, you would choose the top 120 products or top K products that you want to retrieve. And finally, you get the results out. So each of these other components do their own thing with either the posting list or doc values. So this is not the exact data flow inside Solar. I'm just giving you a high level schematic of what happens inside Solar and what we will have to solve for if we had in our real time solution. So the, the APIs over here, Lucene APIs are in the matching and the ranking phases, are quite generic. They actually don't need you to read off data from Lucene segment. You can actually go. So the way, the way we solve it is we basically put our data into an augmented data store. Uh, so based on the type of data, whether it's catalog the, for the slow moving fields, we put it into our Lucene segment. For the fast moving ones, we put it into our NRT store. Uh, updates can flow into each of these independently. Like uh, uh, Lucene commits needn't happen for this data to reflect. Uh, and to build an NRT store of this form, you basically have to solve for two different use cases. One is matching and the other is the forward index. Basically the equivalent of posting list and doc values which are provided by Lucene segment. And Lucene APIs are quite generic such that you can put hook in your own implementations into each of these uh, boxes. And I'll give you a pointer as to what APIs those are so that if anyone wants to look into it, you can look up it later. <coughs> so let's look at the considerations for forward index. I mean, what, what is needed of it? Uh, so lookup efficiency is at most important because a query uh, on the 99th percentile matches around 1 million documents, which means for 1 million documents, you got to go and retrieve from your NRT store the price value or whatever value is needed for search. So this data needs to kept, be kept on the Java heap. You cannot put it in some external store and look it up at runtime because you got to do 1 million uh, lookups for each search query. Uh, because it's on the Java heap, memory efficiency is very important because uh, otherwise you'll be running on heap issues. All right. Uh, let's look at one implementation of how we could implement this forward index. Four. This is basically wherein for, for a given document, you want to retrieve what the price value is. Say you, are, you have a particular document. This is the Solar internal document ID, and you want to find out what the price value is. So the first thing you could do is you could go ask the Lucene segment for what is the corresponding product ID, retrieve the product ID as product D. Here you have a, this implementation of forward index store keeps a map of the product ID to the price value. Say it's in a hash map or in any of the map implementations. So then you go look up inside your forward index for the price value and retrieve 250 as the price by looking up for product D what the price value is. But this, efficient, this implementation is quite inefficient because you're converting an integer into a string. You're looking up into the Solar index to find out what the product ID for this document is. And then you're going and looking up inside the forward index store using a string to look up for the price value. Now, this is uh, highly inefficient for two reasons because you're retrieving the product ID, which is a string from the Lucene index, and you're probably computing a hash on the string product ID to retrieve the actual price. Uh, that makes it highly inefficient. So let's look at how we could probably optimize this. So <coughs> instead of keeping this as strings, strings is the bigger problem here. So how could we get rid of strings? So one way is, I mean, Lucene does it already. So 
uh, just the way Lucene assigns an internal document ID to every product, V2 go on assign a different uh, internal document ID for each product. Basically, this is the NRT index. I mean, NRT specific document ID. It's not the same as the Lucene segment document ID. So once an index is built, we go and add it into our NRT store. So every, every new product that comes in gets added into the NRT forward index. And once a product ID is assigned, a product is assigned an internal document ID, that sticks for the rest of the uh, lifetime of that uh, index. So a particular product, product B, once assigned uh, three, will not change. Uh, so the data itself is kept inside columnar data structures. Uh, just the way doc values are stored. Like, you have price. Um, so if I wanted to get the price of product B, I'd go first look up what is the index of product B, which is three, and then inside the price columnar structure, I would go look up the third position. So it would be 150. So let's see, uh, in this flow, how I can retrieve uh, the, the price value for document three. Uh, one way is actually to go ahead and, again, ask the Lucene index for product, then convert the product into an index, and then retrieve the price. But again, you are still doing the string conversions there. You ideally do not want to do the string conversion. One thing about Lucene segments are they're immutable. Once created, they don't change. So any new Lucene segment, when, when you're bringing up your Lucene segment on replication or on commit, you could uh, go and create a mapping from the Lucene segment's internal ID to your forward index internal ID. So that way, product B, index zero, is mapped to the third index in the NRT store. So that way, uh, to retrieve the value of price for document ID three, I have to uh, ask the mapping entity for the uh, NRT ID of document three, so document three is document two in the NRT store. I retrieve that first, and then ask for what the price of document two is. So I'd go look up in the second index, uh, 012, in the columnar data structure to retrieve the price of the product. So this makes it highly, highly efficient, much, much better than what we were doing earlier. So the, the, uh, the major difference between the two uh, approaches is I mean, you're doing two lookups in both the cases, but in the first case, you were doing all the string manipulations, which are totally avoided. So this is created once in the lifetime of a segment. So when a new segment is coming up, you would create this mapping. You would ask this mapping service all the time, and you would do two array lookups instead of, or two integer-based lookups than using a string-based lookup. Now, uh, these columnar structures, there are a couple of requirements for these guys. Uh, one of them being they have to be indexable by an integer and have to be highly efficient for retrieval. Like, you, given an index three, I should be able to retrieve the price value. Next, it needs to be updatable. That's the whole point of this. Otherwise, it is as equivalent as a Lucene index. And the third one is it should, it should be memory efficient. So for Boolean fields, we use open bit sets, which is a long array, effectively. And you're, you're putting your data into individual bit bits. Uh, most of the fields in Flipkart are enumerated fields, which means there are only uh, it, the size of the field, the number of enumerations is predefined. So instead of storing these enumerated fields as strings, uh, we encode them and put them as uh, bits again. So if you have an enumerated field of uh, with four unique values, you need only two bits. And if you have an enumerated field of 16 different, 16 different values, you would need four bits to store all of that information. So that way, enumerated fields is uh, quite compressed. And for integer, we still stick to keeping an integer array here for all the lookups. So we also support a couple of other data types. But I guess this gives you a gist of what it is. Now, let's look at how we do filtering. So uh, one way to do filtering in Lucene is uh, some, using something called post filter. In a post filter, every matched result is given to your post filter. And you can either choose to 
rank it or you could choose not to. So you have this post filter layer uh, wherein say your query is I want all products between 100 and, five, uh, and 150. You get a particular document, you, you have to tell the next layer as to whether you want to use this product or you do not want to use this, sorry, use this document or you do not want to use the document. So you could use the same engine, look up the value of price for uh, document three and check if it's within the range. If it is within the range, you, you use the document or you throw the document away. Uh, for people who, are, who don't know about post filter, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, but the thing about post filters is uh, if, if my data here is sparse, if uh, there are only two or three products within this price range, 100 and 150, and if my matching result set has a million documents, I'd be iterating million times looking into this data store and uh, basically uh, you'll, you'll be losing a lot of CPU cycles. You ideally do not want to do that uh, because this has very low cardinality. Storing them as bit sets would make it a lot more efficient. So uh, instead of going the post filter route, I mean this is one of the implementations available for filtering. You could do it the post filter route or you could uh, actually create an NRT filter, something called as a filter is a Lucene API of filter, basically takes in a query and emits a doc ID set. A doc ID set is, uh, uh, is basically the, um, the posting list equivalent in memory. So the filter API expects you to return a doc ID set given a query. So you could go, uh, go in an offline fashion check up all the products which, are, which do belong to offer ID 1, create an inverted bit set, and return the inverted bit set out. And uh, you would repopulate this every once in five minutes or every once in 10 minutes. So that way, uh, so basically, your uh, forward store could be much ahead in terms of data, but your inverted bit set is cached and wouldn't, the data wouldn't reflect for the next five to 10 minutes. So from an integration point, uh, integration points in Solar, the lookups are implemented via value sources. Filtering, again, uh, you could either do the post filtering approach or you can uh, write your own custom filter which uh, pulls out data from the cached uh, doc ID set. Uh, queries are just wrappers over filters, and for faceting, we have a custom facet component. Uh, how does all of this fit into the big scheme of things? So you have your updates flowing into uh, the ingestion pipeline. Based on the type of uh, uh, data or update, you basically push it either into Solar Master, which get, then gets replicated down to Lucene, and in Solar Cloud, it would be uh, just the equivalent. Uh, all the NRT sort of updates flow into Kafka and Redis. Uh, every uh, Solar instance is pulling off the NRT data from Kafka. This information in NRT store is not really persisted anywhere. So uh, uh, once you shut down the instance and bring it back up, you would want to populate this forward index with your own content. and. Because uh, the indexing pipeline is pushing all new content into Redis, you can bootstrap all of this information from Redis on, on bringing up a new Solar instance. So everything, all, all data is uh, not, I mean, everything that's read off Kafka is not persisted. Uh, and when a new Solar instance comes up, you basically bootstrap all of this data from Redis. What have we accomplished? So we are able to do real-time sorting, real-time facetting, real-time sort uh, stats component usage, or all the lookup-based uh, things work real-time. If you use a post-filter implementation, even filtering is real-time, just that it has higher latencies when your uh, filter is actually sparse. Uh, you could choose to use the cached docset implementation, but then there is, uh, you lose consistency between your lookup store and your filtering store. This is independent of Lucene commits, and hence data can flow uh, very freely. And uh, query latencies as for lookups are comparable to doc values. Uh, yeah. And because it's independent of commits, you can take full advantage of all your filter caches. They don't get refreshed every time uh, 
uh, NRT update kicks in. Filter caches get refreshed only on uh, Lucene updates. <coughs> uh, the consistency of lookup performance is much higher for R fields compared to doc values because we are looking up into in-memory uh, data structures as opposed to Solar doing it on memory mapped uh, files. So uh, accomplishments from a Flipkart perspective, again, we are able to uh, consume uh, real-time signals. Uh, we have around 160, 150 different fields which are put into the NRT store instead of the uh, Lucene index. Uh, since we launched this, we have reduced uh, the number of out-of-stock products shown to the user by uh, twice the amount. Uh, there have been production instances where we have taken updates rates of 50,000 per second per shard and our indexes are sharded. So yeah, that's our approach to real-time indexing on Lucene. <coughs>